The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Not all anomalies inside the black side were creatures waiting for any opportunity to strike. Some were items. Powerful ones that could change the fate of the world if fallen into the wrong hands and carefully analyzed by people more in control of their own desires. It took a unique kind of expendable to retrieve these. The kind that would not use these nefariously. And sure, it was probably easier to send MTFs down there into the black side after the containment breach, but MTF squads would only be sent down there once all important documents were secured to create a plan of eradication. Yet arrived via an automated U-boat. When not a prisoner on death row, you had screwed up big time in one of Urban Shade's labs, which led to the deaths of three people. As penance, you joined the Expendables program for the black side. However, due to your unique background, you are granted this specific mission. The retrieval of a rather unique specimen. A-1200 From the outside, the anomaly appeared like a simple King James Bible, made out of black bull leather, and pages so old and used they were almost transparent and yellow, not to mention incredibly thin. So much so that before the containment breach, it was kept in a glass box inside its containment chamber. A-1200, codename The Skin Bible, had a terrible power. Reading just a few psalms would leave one satisfied, and for some even restored their faith in Christianity. However, if the reading was continued, their psyche would start to break down, changing their personality fundamentally into a violent sociopath with the goal to kill as many people as possible. A rage that could not be quenched. The problem was that this didn't just lead to mindless killing. No, it led to cunning, lies, cheating, the creation of plans. The anomaly was discovered during incident I-1200-01, which was the day a man whose name had been redacted on all papers, who had read the Skin Bible to a certain point, attacked a nuclear power plant with the goal of blowing it up to take as many people with him as possible. The worst of all was, when the book was used for a sermon, it would affect everyone hearing it. The only thing that didn't seem to work were recordings. However, if a live broadcast of the reading occurred, that still counted. And that could be devastating. And so, you volunteered. It was your penance. If you survived this mission, you'd be back on track, becoming a true scientist for Urban Shade. But as you explored the abandoned black site, all you could think of was, why hasn't anyone destroyed it yet? You certainly would. Though perhaps its continued existence was warranted. There were secrets here. Knowledge. And perhaps the offer of the skin bible itself, as twisted as it was, could be discovered through it. After all, so far, no one actually ever finished it yet. There could be unknown effects that occur later should the thing be read further. 
Your curiosity was boundless. But you were too scared to read it yourself. Should you find it, you would just carry it up. Fifty-fifty, you'd be pardoned, right? At least that's how you understood it. What if one of the more sentient monsters of the black side read it? Those were the thoughts that were going around your brain. You were equipped with a flashlight. And aside from that, you were dressed in an orange prison jumpsuit. You were not given bare necessities, such as a gun, or at least a security baton. That was sadly out of the question. So unarmed and afraid, you wandered the empty, dead hallways of the black side. The air had an empty, lifeless smell to it, and the noises from the ocean outside were muted, but definitely there. With the size of the underwater black side, you didn't expect to actually run into any anomalies. But that couldn't be further from the truth. You are hiding from... something. You had stuffed yourself into a locker. You could practically feel your mortality in this moment. Horror come reality. Before you became an expendable, you worked with A-409, which was an anomalous humanoid with the ability to cause an unending urge to commit self-deletion through simple touch. She... It... It... It was actually quite a sweet girl. You hated calling her it, but it was required to refer to anomalies as a simple it due to emotional connections. But aside from her, you had never actually seen another real entity. Aside from dangerous objects or viruses. Seeing this eldritch, writhing, massive monster of flesh, tentacles and teeth was enough to almost make you wet yourself. And the only reason you didn't was because you haven't drank or eaten in a while and your bladder was completely empty. You had been too anxious to eat or drink. And now you definitely had no appetite for obvious reasons. Once the thing had moved, it took you ten minutes of absolute silence to finally feel brave enough to open the cabinet. You were alone again, thank God. Stepping out of the locker, you continued on your path, dodging the residue left behind by the creature. Now, the thing you were looking for was a book in a glass container. To put it as simple as possible. The anomaly was easy to contain and easy to avoid, just don't read it. As such, you could easily deduct that it must be in the low security containment area of the black side. Your path to it was short, due to low security containment being quite useful to teach interns about the dangers of the job without high risk of death as well as hiding more important, dangerous secrets from newbies who weren't completely loyal yet. You're checking a signpost pointing to the containment chambers. When it happened, it was as if the wall you stood before came alive as a humanoid being immediately went for your throat as it peeled itself from the wall itself. You reacted out of instincts alone, placing an arm on the thing's faceplate that looked exactly like the signpost wall. It was strong, and it took all your strength to keep it away from your jugular. It snarled, growled, and bit. You screamed in fear. The thing was strong, not all-powerful, of course. Maybe if you had been prepared, you probably could have at least thrown the thing off of you and run away, but you could feel your arms shake 
The monster writhed in your grasp as it tried everything possible to sink its teeth into you. It didn't have arms. If it had them, who knows what would have happened to you. In training, you had learned to go for eyes and private parts, but this thing had neither. How was it even seeing you? Oh, perhaps it sensed your movement and your body heat. Either way, you weren't going to give up now. The monster angled its head upwards, making the lower part of your hand move up as well, slapping into its jaws, and then it bit down on your hand. You screamed in pain. The shock of it finally made your limbs weak enough. And just as the wall monster's teeth grazed the skin of your throat, you could feel its weight being thrown off of you. The fear in your eyes as you stared at the creature whose body had been slammed into the opposite wall. It was either dead by the impact or knocked out. Either way, it wasn't moving. Jesus. These attack usually from behind. He must have really liked you. You heard a voice. He sounded confident. As you turned your head towards it, you shook out of fear. But the mysterious stranger immediately placed his large, scaly hand on your mouth. Okay, uh, can we skip the surprised screaming? I would really appreciate not more monsters showing up. You're looking at a big fish thing with a humanoid body attached to its upper half, which appeared like a sea serpent. Blue glowing eyes that exhumed cautious compassion, or something like that. Uh, perhaps pity. I will give you my fully redacted file later, alright? Cause like, whenever I do this whole introduction thing with one of you guys, I waste precious minutes and most of you just don't survive long enough to bother. The thing's mouth turned into a big smile. As threatening as it looked, you could tell it was meant to be comforting. Now, listen, I will remove my hand. You will accompany me to a place more, um, suitable for survival, and we have a little chat. Also, then I can bandage you up. With his hand still on your mouth, you tilted your head slightly, where the wall-dwelling creature had bitten you. Blood was gushing out quite rapidly. And as expected, now that you actually saw it, you felt the pain. You screamed into his hand, causing the monster above you to roll his eyes. The easiest thing was to knock you out, but then he would risk brain damage. And he couldn't treat that. So instead, out of a pouch attached to a belt on his tail, using his other two hands, he pulled out bandages and gauze as well as PvP iodine to treat the wound. You watched him professionally patch you up, biting into his scales whenever the pain got too strong. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. This is good, this is good. Keep biting, keep biting. He purred, amused. Your hand hurt like hell as you sat there, shaking, looking at your bandaged up hand. Your fingers were still free. When would this nightmare end? The monster then crossed his arms. Quite squeamish for a death row inmate, huh? Well, would have loved to see the interview footage. Uh, let me guess. You just sat there as the cops threw the undeniable proof on the table that you killed someone. Maybe your mommy was in the room as well. And she started crying while you begged for her forgiveness. This was so oddly specific that you narrowed your eyes looking up at him in confusion. Ah, uh, look, uh, I've just seen a lot over the past couple of months. No, no, I... I'm not a death row inmate, I was a researcher and... 
Once again, he put a hand on your mouth. Less talking, more walking. Got it? He then helped you up on your feet. And so, you are forced to follow him. The monster guided you into a camera room. Countless monitors were set up on its eastern wall, while multiple mattresses were put down on the other side in a long line. The creature slithered onto the mattresses, covering them all with his massive tail, while his human back was placed neatly against the wall, hands folded over what was essentially his lap. So how is this place any safer? Well, security officers have turrets. This is a security office. And they have turrets. One is up there. He pointed at a metal hatch on the ceiling. And out there, you probably noticed the out-of-place wall tiles. Right, right. Okay then, Sugar Kim. What can I do for you? He said, finally smirking. You looked at your hand. I mean, didn't you already do enough? Fine. What can you do for me? Your eyes met, and he smirked. Tell me, who are you? You said something about a researcher. Right. My name is Lum, junior researcher of Urban Shade. I made my doctor title at Sacred Heart Medical, and I have screwed up big time. You began explaining the incident. In the Urban Shade black site you had initially worked at, you had been assigned to three anomalies. A-409, H-4, which was an anomalous fungus that grew on canines. It took on the shape of a white horn, like a growth. It wasn't dangerous to humans, but caused cancerous growths on the animal, which were filled with spores of the fungus, really nasty and could potentially lead to the extermination of all canines on the planet. And that would be devastating. And the reason why it was researched. And finally, Q-99, which were a collection of blood samples found in an abandoned hospital. Q-99 was the reason for your demotion to an expendable. The blood samples functioned like regular blood of an unknown person. But if they managed to enter a person's regular bloodstream, Q-99 would cause an instant aplastic anemia, meaning the bone marrow would stop producing red blood cells. Instead, the victim's body would start producing more instances of Q-99, eventually causing the death of the victim for lack of blood. Your foolishness had made you carelessly place one of the sample vials of Q-99 into a blood transfusion first aid kit. Safe to say, that was probably the worst mistake of your life. The monster listened carefully as you explained the incident. He tilted his head. I almost feel sorry for you. You sniffled. You had gotten emotional as you explained. Guilt. Even if they didn't punish me to be an expendable, I, I probably would have demanded it. My negligence killed three people. What are you here for, huh? The skin bible. I said, if I get the skin bible, my penance is complete. You heard the monster gulp audibly. Oh, that thing is evil, he muttered. So it is here. It's not destroyed? He nodded. I read in experiment logs that no one has reached the end, and it's theorized there's a third effect, maybe even a fourth. It's like a book that doesn't want to be read. So what could it possibly do? What if you can suppress the violent urge to kill enough? What else can it do? Ugh. I'm scared of a goddamn book. Do you have experience with that? The monster crossed his arms and thought. You'll find out. 
Ominous? Definitely trustworthy. <laughs> Listen, Sugar Cube, it's in low security containment, still in its box, but if I were you, I wouldn't touch it. Getting close to the thing. It fills your head with thoughts that aren't your own. You furrowed your brows. Didn't you just say it doesn't want to be read? He deadpanned, and after a moment of quiet, you smiled. It's fine, I get it. It's an anomaly. It doesn't have to make sense. You just have to figure out how to fight it. The monster then nodded. Tell you what, Sugar Cube. You'll find the skin Bible. Bring it over. We call Urban Shade. And then give you my document. As a parting gift. You smile. I guess? Yeah. Sounds good. The monster gave you a hand-drawn map of the entire low-security area of the black side. He marked one of the rooms with an X. That's where they keep it, he said casually. The monster's map turned out to be true. Well, he did save you. With the map being functional too, well, he just got your trust. The door to the skin bible was closed, though. Thankfully, the keypad next to it had the correct number already typed in. Seems as if the last person who tried to enter stopped just at the green unlock button. And so, with a shaking hand, you pressed it. The thick metal door opened leading you into a sterile room. Compared to the rest of the black side, this room still looked normal. No cracks, even the lamp still worked and wasn't blinking. No blood or scratches. Just an empty room made out of naked concrete. You stepped inside. The room beneath the light bulb stood a square wooden table with a chair. On top of it, the glass box of the skin Bible. It really did look like an hour, any other King James Bible. With black leather, golden letters. The only indication that anything was off of it was that the golden words on it, Bible, King James Edition, were the only words on it. It didn't read anything like, Holy Bible, King James Edition, or just Holy Bible, which was more common. There were cameras in the corners of the room. They blinked red, indicating that they were inactive. Quietly and with a heavy beating heart, you step forward. You weren't a Bible thumper by any means, but there was a strange, almost holy feeling overcoming you as you took hold of the glass box. It was a feeling akin to entering a European cathedral. The feeling of the human mind trying to comprehend the gravity of countless generations, all dedicated to this little book. The art. The society is formed. Maybe you just took a peek. After all, stage one was just believing in God, right? Which could be a comforting thought. Right? Your fingers took hold of the locking mechanism. The book was making you want to read it. Using your natural curiosity to do so. And it filled your head with thoughts, numbers. They were ghosting around your head. And when you made sense of them, you punched a code into the lock. Click. The smell of old parchment entered your nostrils as dead air pushed out of the box. All your hairs were standing up, hard, pounding, your fingers taking hold of the rough leather of the Bible. You could still stop, right? Just put it back 
and pretend you didn't have this moment of weakness. But then you opened it. And so did your mouth. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. You started mumbling, loud enough for your ears to hear. And the earth was without form, and cold and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Sebastian was bored. Ugh, what was taking so long? Did you get eaten by an angler? He started playing with a rubber ball, throwing it against the wall, creating loud thumb, and then catching it as it flew back. He shouldn't care this much. You were an expendable. Thump. There had been like 30 of you now. He didn't care about those. Thump. Sure, you had been the first girl. Maybe he was a little lonely. Thump. Man, and the fact you kept the first three buttons of your jumper open showing just enough cleavage to be entertaining. Thump. Ah, uh, he wished you'd survive. It would be a shame for your genes. Thump. Having you go back being a researcher would mean you'd have allies in Urban Shade again who could arrange his rescue, perhaps even. Thump. Sebastian caught the ball and leaned back against the wall. Arrange his rescue. <laughs> yeah, like that would ever happen. He'd probably starve here. The saboteur looked at the ball in his hand, mimicking a high-pitched anime voice. He began talking for it. Do you want to go save her? I don't know. She is... even alive. Why should I even care? You clearly do. He rolled his eyes. Because uh, she's kind of cute. Doesn't matter. You care for someone other than yourself. <laughs> you know I'm right. Ugh. What even is the point? You're a ball. You, you don't know anything about me. He threw the ball really hard. Though, as if possessed... It flung back, hitting him in the head. Okay, fine, fine, fine. That's, that's divine intervention or something. Uh, fine. I look for her, but... But if she's dead, I'll feed you to an incinerator. With a grumpy expression and crossed arms, Sebastian began slithering towards the skin Bible's containment area. On his way, he noted that there were no new blood puddles, and there were no active monsters. Just the faint hint of the smell of your sweat and blood that you left behind. Only because his sense of smell had been enhanced by the surgeries. And so he stopped in front of the locked security door to the Bible. Wait, locked? He had typed in the opening code himself, just not the open button. It was done by someone by choice. After all, for safety reasons, the security door could not be opened from the inside out of risk that a person in stage 2 might be in there and get out. Oh god, this was terrible. Sebastian quickly typed in the code. But as the door opened, he definitely didn't regret it. Your jumpsuit lied on the floor. The skin Bible was in your hand. As you read it, Zavia was rolling past your lips. And you were groaning and moaning, rather rubbing your groin against the table's corner. Only for a moment did he consider locking the door again. But then you looked from the Bible up to him. Your eyes had changed. Your pupils seem to have taken on the shape of hearts. They were practically glowing in a bright pink. I think I like where this is going. He thought with a smug grin, 
as he slithered into the room. As he came closer, he closed the skin Bible. With one hand, he put the book into the case again and closed it. Locked it even. While your other hand <laughs> was between your legs. So is this effect free? You bit your lower lip, finally going down on your knees. Your face was flushed, red as you shivered. <sighs> yes. I don't even remember when the anger turned to this. <sighs> you were filled with pure ecstasy. On your knees, you shuffled over to him. I feel so fucking hot. Not waiting for his consent, you began grabbing onto him. Strong, rubbing your face against the scales. It was so hard. It felt so good against your sensitive skin. Uh, you're a man, right? Right? You pleaded. Sebastian smirked. I suppose. You threw your head back, looking into his eyes. Please, I need... I need... It's okay. Just... Like an overgrown, kind of sexy spider, you crawled up his body, hanging from his shoulders. You stared into his eyes, your legs wrapped around his hip. And then you pressed your lips against his. Hungrily, devouring his mouth. Sebastian was taken completely off guard. His third eye fell upon the skin Bible which just lied there. Innocently, as if it didn't just turn this poor innocent woman into a cow in heat. Well, maybe this wasn't too bad. He hummed, embracing the lust you were radiating onto him. Sebastian managed to tear his face off of yours for a moment. And he said something. Hope you know you know what you're getting yourself into. It got pretty big after my surgeries. Oh god, please, yes! You pleaded. I feel so empty. Please, fill me! Okay, time for some Bible thumping, I guess. Hey, thank you for watching the video until the very end. I greatly appreciate that. That helps me with the algorithm. But before we say goodbye, I would really like to shout out all of my lovely darling stewards for supporting my 4.99 membership tier. MaxiCat, Alison Watkins, Husky HD 17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111. Giovanna Morietti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Your support is greatly appreciated, as well as the support of my other channel members. I couldn't do this without you. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here, and... See you soon.